Hello, welcome. Take a moment, read this problem, try it out, and then solve it with me by pressing play. Okay, so we've got a half-life problem here. I'm going to solve it in two ways, uh, so you can see two approaches to this problem, but there are many. Um, so the idea is that, uh, first of all, we have some, some um, element or some molecule or something that's breaking down, iodine-131, and they tell us that the half-life is approximately 8.02 days. And then they're going to give us some volume measurements of something. 20 milligrams, there it is, okay, of some mass measurement, excuse me, of I-131. And determine the nearest day. You always want to pay attention how they're measuring things here in days, which is nice because we're already given units in days here. The amount of time needed uh, before the amount of I-131 of the patient's body is approximately 7 milligrams. Okay, so... Um, first of all, let's just solve it in um, using uh, exponential functions in a kind of a more common way. This is kind of a clever technique I saw a student use. Uh, basically, the idea is that you start with 20, right? And you want to eventually do something to 20 and get it down to 7. What are you doing to it? Well, you're subtracting 50% uh, every time uh, 8.02 days passes. So I can call that t. I can say that if I specify what I'm doing here, T is the number of 8.02 day cycles. Okay, so if you solve this, you divide both sides by 20, you get 7 over 20 equals 1, point, oh, 1 minus 0.5 is a half, so 0.5 to the T. And now you've got to solve for T in some way. Uh, what I might do to solve this is use a logarithm, use the log of uh, base 0.5 of, you can do log base 0.5, I'll just, I'll, I'll just do the common log, the log of both sides of 7 twentieths equals the log, you could take any logarithm of the sides of 0.5 to the t. Okay, so here we can use a property of logarithms that I can multiply t over here instead of using as the exponent of this term. It equals, it's the same thing as t times the log of 0.5. And that's the log of 7 twentieths. And we want to know what t is, right? So let's divide both sides by the log of 0.5. So t is equal to the log of 7 twentieths divided by the log of 0.5. And we can do this on our calculator. All right, so here we want to know what the log of 7 twentieths will equal and then divide that by the log of 0.5. Boom. We get 1.514, right? It's 57. So I'm going to write that. That means that um, t is about 1.514547. Uh, and those are 8.02 day cycles. So you would just say, the final answer would be 1.51457 times 8.02, right? That's because every one of our t's is about 8.02. Now, I'm not going to round this number. I'm going to leave it in the calculator, multiply it by 8.02. I get my answer, about 12.14. So it's about 12.14, and that means 12 days. So that's one cool way of solving it that I thought you might appreciate. Um, of course, there are many ways to solve this, and an, an, a variation, a more typical variation on this thinking right here. Now, I guess I'll solve it three ways. So you can solve it. So you solve them three ways. I like, I like these half-life problems. So our second way would be to say, okay, we need to end up with seven. We start off with twenty, and we're taking half-life. So it's one minus point five again. It's right as a half, and. Instead of letting t equal 8.02 um, 8 day cycles, you can say t divided by 8.02. You take the time and in, in, in this case, uh, the, so in this case, t is being divided by 8.02 to account for the fact that the half-life is every 8.02 days. In other words, you won't get exactly half. Let me just show you what I mean off the side here. Um, I'll write down here. Let's say we call this f of x, right? f of x is this function, 20 times 1 half to the t divided by um, 8.02. t is the number of days. So if we plug in exactly 8.02 days, let's see what happens. 
that would be 20 times 1 half to the 8.02 divided by itself. And what happens here? What's 8.02 divided by itself? Well, it's the same thing as anything divided by itself, any, anything not including 0. That's 1. So it would be 20 times a half to the first, which is 20 times a half, which is 10. It's the half-life. T is the number of days. 8.02 is, is the length of the half-life cycle. And that will give you exactly one half-life. So it's another way of doing it. It's close to the to the other. And you divide both sides by 20. So 7 divided by 20 equals 1 half to the T divided by 8.02. And then we could do, I mean, there's a lot of things we can do here, but I'm just going to take, again, the log of both sides, the log of 7 twentieths. It's going to be equal to the log of this thing, the log of 1 half to the t divided by 8.02. Now, this is our exponent. We bring it down in front. t divided by 8.02 times the log of 1 half equals the log of 7 twentieths. We want to know what t equals, right? Don't be scared by all this, this, um, all these symbols here. It's just, it's t times the log of one half. So we want to know what t equals. Divide both sides by the log of one half, the log of seven twentieths, divided by the log of one half, and that equals t divided by eight point zero two. So if I want to know what t is, I can multiply also both sides by eight point zero two, and this is what t will equal. And notice, this is the same thing as before. It's the log of 7 20ths divided by the log of 1 half, then that result multiplied by 8.02. So we'll get 12 days again. Now, I want to show you a third way, because I really this is the way I like to use, and it might make more sense to you uh, and help you. The third way to think about this, in general, uh, it's nice to use E for um, half-lives. And the formula I'm thinking of uh, named Mert by many of my students here, at least one in particular, m of t equals m sub 0 e to the rt. And this is talking about, this could be growth or decay, but here we're talking about half-lives in particular. And it looks like the word Mert. Here's m-e-r-t. It's easy to memorize. The first thing I do is I, I think about what's going on here, and I say, well, what would the rate of decay be for any molecule of half-life? Well, the idea in general, this is a nice little proof here, if you start with some mass m sub 0, a half-life will pass, you'll end up with half that mass. Right? So this is useful because now we can come up with a general description for the rate of decay of all half-lives and how to define them. So the first thing I would do is define, divide both sides by m sub 0. And I want to solve here for r, a general rate of based on uh, the rate of the how do I say it sorry defining the half life of a function right so let's solve for r get our general rate how do we do that well uh, the first thing I I start by dividing by m sub zero and then the next thing I would do is take the natural log of both sides natural log because that's the the base we're dealing with the, the the base of e so the natural log will help us so. The log of 1 half, which is really just the lo natural log of 2 to the negative first. Right, 2 to the negative first really means 1 divided by 2. Equals the natural log of e to the rt. Now the natural log of e to the rt is just rt. Because uh, it's saying e to what power is e to the rt. It's saying e to what power equals e to the rt. That's what this statement is saying here. And that answers rt. And that equals the natural log of 2 to the negative first. Now, property of logs, you can bring this negative 1 on the front here. You get negative 1 times the natural log of 2. And in general, the rate right, for a half-life is the negative natural log of 2 divided by the time you're given. So in this case, if I go back to my Mert formula, and I want to solve when it's going to equal 7. 7 would equal 20, the initial mass, times e to the negative ln of 2 over 8.02 times t. And here, if we solve this, we will get 12 days as well. We divide both sides by 20, take the natural log of both sides, and that's going to get us the natural log of this thing is just negative natural log of 2 over 8.2 times t. And that means that t is equal to 
the natural log of 7 20ths divided by this thing, the negative natural log of 2 over 8.02, and that equals t. Now just to confirm that we're not crazy, and if you didn't like this one, I will show you that these are equal. So the natural log button is here, of 7 divided by 20, divided by the negative natural log of 2, divided by 8.02. I should add a set of parentheses in here. I want to capture that this thing is being divided first. I don't think it matters, but I want to make sure I'm capturing it correctly. So I go to second delete as an insert function. And here I get about 12.14. Same number, right? So you can approach this in a multitude of ways. Using E is going to be useful in general calculus, so you might as well start playing with it now. That's one way. And then these two other ways, just use common uh, approaches to exponential functions to understand half-lives. All right, I hope this helps.